finite state automaton is an abstract or mathematical model of a machine. So for an example, we have a light switch here that you've seen before. Here's a picture here if you're not familiar with one. Usually light switches have uh, two different formations. Either it is up, and that means that the light is on, or it is down, and that means the light is off. So if we think about the light itself, it has two states. It's either in an off state or an on state, and we can change whether it's off or on by flicking the switch up or down. So what we see in this image is really just a representation of that. We have two different states. We have off in pink here, so we can call this a state, and we have on in green to the right, so this is another state. And we have arrows that tell us how the state changes if we flick the switch up or down. So for example, if we start in the off position and we keep the switch down, it goes back to the off position. In other words, it doesn't change. But if we start in the off position and we flick the switch up, then we now go into the on state, the light is on. And you can see what happens on the right side as well. If it's on and it stays up, well, clearly it still stays on. But if we start in the on position and we flick it down, then it goes off. So this machine right here is just representing that light switch. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by looking at a state transition table. Now, what this will do is this is going to track how things change depending on the state we start in and the input we give it. So on one side of our table, we list all of the states that we have. So in this case, we have off and we have on. And then for the inputs, we write that on the other side of the table, so on the top. We have two different things we can do to the switch. We can turn it up or we can turn it down. So the first thing is what happens if we start in the off state and we flick it up? So this is filling in this first change here. So if it is off and we turn it up, it changes to the on state. Uh, if it starts on and we turn it up, it stays in the on state. But if we start in the off state and we turn it down, it then stays off. And if we start in the on state and we give it a down input, then it turns itself off. So this state transition table tells us what happens depending on which state we start in and what input we give it. It gives us a nice new output. And for a deterministic finite state machine or finite state automaton, all of these states and inputs need to give one output. So off and up has to do one thing, off and down has to do one thing, on and up has to do one thing, and on and down has to do one thing. So before we start looking at other types of finite state machines, let's define formally how we can build a finite state automaton. So mathematically, it is a five tuple. This just means that there's five different components to it. So one, we have a set of states. So what we saw before, was, for example, we had the off state and we had the on state. Now I have another new finite state machine at the top here that we're going to take a look at shortly, uh, but I just want to think about what we did before with the light switch. We have capital sigma, which is the alphabet. This is the same thing that we used for strings earlier in the previous video. So the alphabet are the different types of inputs you can give it. So, for example, in our alphabet for the light switch, we had up and down, and we could do any sequence of up and downs and we would end in some state. We have a transition function, delta. So this says we take q and sigma and we get out q. So what this really means is that we give it a state, we give it an input, and then we get a new state out of it. So this is like saying that if we start with off and we give it up, then what's going to happen is we end with on. So that's the state transition table we saw. We define something as the start state. So let's say you walk into a room and the light switch is turned down, uh, then it's off. So off could have been the start state or we could have started with on. And then we have a set of final states. So these are the states that a string can end in and is acceptable. So with a light switch, it's perfectly fine if you end with it off 
or it's perfectly fine if you end with it on. So both of those could be final states. But let's take a look at this machine up here and let's figure out how these different things can be discussed with this state machine up top. So this looks a little bit different and this might not have meaning yet, but maybe as we work through it, we'll be able to determine some meaning out of it. So Q is the set of states. So instead of using things like on or off, which have real meaning, sometimes we just use these dummy states like Q0, Q1, Q2. They don't have any meaning to us, but they're different states that we can be in. So in this thing up here, we have Q0. This is a state in one of our circles. We have Q1. It's another state in one of our circles. And we have Q2, which is a state in that final circle. So basically every single circle is a state. For our alphabet, we have to take a look at our arrows and say, well, what can we do? Like what inputs can we give it? So in this case, if we take a look at everything in green there, we can either give zeros as inputs or ones as inputs. Okay, what is our start state? How do we determine the start state? Well, sometimes we have a squiggly arrow that points to the start state, or we have uh, this little pointer here. So a little triangle without the base, you could say. And this tells us where we start when we like first encounter the machine. So in this example, Q0 is the start state. And it's typical convention to give Q0 as your start state. Now F is the set of final states. Now how do we determine what a final state is in a diagram? Well, all of the states are made up of circles. And the final states have two circles. And this just says if we end in this state, it's an accepted input. So for the final state here, uh, we just have one final state, but it could be more, so we always define them in terms of sets. So we can say this is Q2 as the final state. If it ends in Q2, it's a valid string. If it ends at Q0 or Q1, uh, it's not okay. Okay, so we've defined Q sigma, the start state, and the final states, but what about the transition function? So this is where, of course, we take a state, we take an input from our alphabet as a pair, and then we get a state out of it. So if, let's just separate this a little bit so we can see. If we start with Q0, so let's say we're starting at this point, and we give it a zero, where do we end up? Well, we just follow the arrow and we end back at Q0, so we can put Q0 there. Uh, if we start at Q0 and we get a one, then we can follow the arrow from Q0 and we go to Q1. Okay, so that tells us what happens when we're at Q0 and we give it either zero or one. Taking a look at Q1, okay, if we're at Q1 and we give it a zero, then we travel to Q2. And if we start at Q1 and we give it a one, we end up at the same spot in Q2. So sometimes we have two inputs side by side, and this just means that both of those inputs do the same thing. Now if we're at Q2 and we give it a zero, it sends us back to Q1. So we can follow a little line here and we get sent back to Q1. But if we're at Q2 and we give it a one, we get to stay in Q2. So uh, this is the formal definition of the machine above. So you can either use a picture or you could define it mathematically with these five different bits of information and they mean and represent the same thing. So what is this finite state machine except what is it like? Well, it likes at least two ones. So it needs one one to get to Q1, it needs another one to get to Q2, and then it wants to end in a one as well because if you give it a zero, it goes back to Q1. So basically this is a machine that needs at least two ones and it must also end in a one. Okay, so whether that's important or not or useful for us, uh, that depends on what we're trying to build. That's an example of something you can do. So let's do a couple more. Okay, so here's another finite state machine. Instead of using Q0 and Q1 and so on, I've changed the states a little bit. 
So in this one, we have two states. This is going to be Q2 and Q4. Those are our circles there. Uh, our alphabet, it seems like we're either using A's or B's as inputs. So our alphabet here is going to be A, B. Uh, where's our start state? Well, we see the little squiggly arrow pointing to Q4. So Q4 is going to be our start state. And what are the acceptable end states? Well, the only double circle we see here is around Q2. So our final states are going to be just the set containing Q2. Okay, now, in order to do our transition function, we need to list all of the states on one side. So I'm going to do them on the left side, so Q2 and Q4. And then we're going to put our inputs on the top, so either A or B. And now let's see what happens when we put in combinations of these. So if we start at Q2 and we put in A, we get to move over to Q4. Okay, so Q2 A goes to Q4. If we start at Q2 and we put in B, well, we end up back at Q2. If we start at Q4 and we put in A, we're going to go to Q2, and the same thing happens if we put in B. So Q4 takes us to Q2 no matter what we give it. Okay, so what is this machine doing? Um, either it is going to be something like A is going to be accepted, or AB, or AAAB, or A and any number of Bs, or even just a single B or multiple Bs would be accepted. So it seems like in order for this machine to accept something, we have to give it either no A's or an odd number of A's. So again, whether or not that's useful depends on what we're building. I have one more example here. If you can beat me to it, that's great. Just pause the video, try it out on your own. Okay, now I'll take you through it. So with this one, we have two states. In this case, we have Q1 and Q0. Doesn't matter what order we write them in, so I'm gonna do them numerically, Q0 and Q1. Our inputs here, either we're giving it a zero or a one. Uh, what is our start state? Where is that squiggly arrow? It's pointing at Q0. So Q0 is our start state. And the final state, well again, it's just one that's accepted. It's the Q0 that has the double circle. So the start state and the final state happen to be the same thing. And that's totally okay. So for our transition function, we write our states on the left, Q0, Q1, our inputs at the top, zero and one. Now let's see what happens. So if we start at Q0 and we give it zero, we go to Q1. If we start at Q0 and give it a one, it stays at Q0. Uh, if we have Q1 and we give it a zero, it goes back to Q0. But if we have Q1 and give it a one, it stays at Q1. So if I think about what this is doing, uh, this is really just looking for an even number of zeros. Because the state always stays the same when you give it a one. So ones aren't affecting whether or not it's going to be accepted or not. Instead, every time you give it a zero, it switches between the two states. And because you start at Q0 with nothing input, uh, it's either going to take zero, or it's going to take zero, zero, or zero, 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 and so on with really any number of ones in between. Okay, so that's how we can define these finite state automata formally. Now, I talked about all these different accepted strings, what a machine accepts. And whatever that machine accepts is called the language of the machine. So we can define a set of strings and we can call them A and we can say all the strings in A are accepted. So the language of some machine M is equal to that set of strings that are accepted. So if we take a look at this machine, which is a lot more complicated because we have three states here, uh, we can try to figure out what's accepted. So we can try some strings. And what we notice here is that uh, if we start with some number of zeros, it's not really going to change our state. We're gonna stay in Q0. So what we need is we need at least one one. Uh, and then if we give it a zero or a one, we go to Q2. So 
it could accept one zero or it could accept one one. Uh, if we give it a one after that, it's going to be accepted as well. But if we give it a second zero, then suddenly it's not going to be accepted. So if we gave it one zero zero, that's not good anymore. Or if we gave it one zero one zero, that's not good anymore. In order to make it acceptable, we'd have to do something like one zero zero one or one zero zero zero. So we can put all of these different strings that are accepted into a set. So one one zero one 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 zero one and so on. So that's the set A. And then we could say the language of the machine is just equal to the set A. And if we found a nice pattern to describe what's happening here, then, you know, we could give it a nice verbal description. But this machine doesn't have any immediate pattern, so uh, we might just put some strings in a set there. So uh, that is the basics of a finite state machine. If you have any questions, I'm sure someone in the comments below will be able to answer you or I'll be able to get to you. Uh, so leave a comment if you do have questions.